Hi, and welcome to the second in a series of demo videos for Advanced Roadmaps for Jira. In the last demo, I provided an overview of the tool, how to configure the scope and the view of the plan, as well as some of the basics around scheduling the roadmap. In this video, I'll demonstrate some of the more advanced capabilities around planning with team capacity. There are a few requirements needed in your plan setup to unlock capacity planning for your teams. We have videos and documentation that provide detailed guidance around recommended setup, but I'll give you a quick summary of them now. In order for Scrum teams to manage their sprint capacity, it's necessary to use their team's board as distinct issue sources. In this plan, I have issues from my iOS team and Android team sourced into the plan via boards. The IP board is what we use to pull initiatives across projects into our plan. Next, on the Teams tab, make sure that the teams in your plan are associated to the respective issue sources. If you created your plan using the Teams boards, then this should be automatically associated. Here you can also set your team's velocity so that you can accurately represent the amount of work the team completes in an iteration. You can refer to the team's sprint report in Jira to calculate the average of the recent completed sprints. Now we're ready to plan the team's capacity. On the roadmap tab, I'll view the hierarchy from the epic level to focus on the team level issues. Group by team to view each team's swim lane. Then enable the capacity on the timeline to view sprints and their workload for each iteration in context of the schedule. We haven't yet planned the timeline for the Android team here. The dates you see are coming from sprints and sprint dates associated to the stories, which are then rolled up to the epic level. We can see that one of the sprints has a capacity problem as it's turned red. We'll first concentrate on the short-term capacity concerns by reducing the timeline range to three months and focusing on the story level issues. Here we can see that a few large stories in the Koala sprint has blown out the capacity. We can move one of the issues to the next sprint to resolve the overbooked Koala sprint. After doing that, we can see that the Wallaby sprint is now overbooked. There's still a bit of capacity remaining in Koala now that we've moved an issue from it, so we can move one of the smaller issues from Wallaby into Koala to effectively balance the load. To keep things neat, I'll update the rank on the issue to reflect the new priority. Issues can only be assigned to sprints that have been created in the team's Jira board. I'll quickly assign the team's remaining stories to a sprint that the team recently created. These issues are now scheduled and their effort accounted for in Sprint Platypus. So this is how you plan upcoming sprints and granular story level issues in context of capacity. The plan reflects the calculation of when or what sprints an issue will be scheduled in, the size of the estimates on the issues, and the velocity of the team assigned to complete the issues. The more in advance that you break down and estimate your issues, the more accurate capacity planning will be for you. For long-term capacity planning, you'll be working with less defined issues based on rough high-level estimates. For epics that aren't broken down or only partially broken down into stories, set a best guess estimate on the epic. This high-level estimate can represent either how much remaining effort you think the issue will require, or how much effort you're willing to invest in this issue. With a rough high-level estimate applied to the Android team's epics, simply drag and drop them onto the schedule to see the capacity load for each iteration it's scheduled across. The capacity is calculated alongside other issues scheduled in parallel, so the capacity will reflect whether the long-term plan is achievable. As we start to approach that work, the team will break it down, define the necessary scope and estimates so stories can be accurately planned into sprints following the process I demonstrated earlier. Note that since epic estimates reflect the remaining work, you should reduce its value as you break it down. With multiple teams in a plan, it's easy to get a top-level report across each team's capacity by collapsing all groups. So this is how you can do short-term and long-term capacity planning for your teams in advanced roadmaps. But that won't be all. We have more functionality on the way. Coming soon on our roadmap, we'll provide the ability to define sprint-specific velocities. Let the plan know whether there's expected to be any fluctuations for the team's capacity for certain sprints such as when a team member is on vacation or there's expected to be reduction in output over, say, a holiday season. That concludes our demonstration of planning with team capacity. I hope it's been useful. In our next video, I'll demonstrate some of the functionality around planning, tracking, and managing dependencies in advanced roadmaps with a close look at our brand new dependency visualization report. I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching.